Hi guys, it's Michelle from Scrap Secrets and welcome to another technique video. So unfortunately, I lost the footage that I had of me making these cards, but I want to walk you through what I did with them and want to show you guys how they came out and give you maybe some tips and tricks on how to do this and just give you a couple more ideas because I have plenty more of where this came from. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about this card which is made from the Honey Bee gift bag card dies. So it is a five piece set. You get three different tags. You get the circle, the square, and then the regular traditional tag. You get this piece, which you cut out twice with the uh, paper that you want it to be the bag. And then you get this piece here, which looks kind of funny, right? So this is the tissue paper piece. So here's the tissue paper up there, but then in here, you can put your Christmas message, your birthday message, whatever message to the recipient you want. You can put gift cards in here. Uh, it's larger, so you can do a bunch of different things, and this is what I have some ideas for this. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So just wanna show you guys fairly quickly what I did, because like I said, unfortunately, I lost the footage of this, but let me walk you through some things and give you some tips. So this is two pieces of the deer paper and you put them together. What you wanna do is just put string on the one side if you're gonna put it on the back of a card. All you wanna do is put the string on the one side because you're not gonna see the back of it, so it's not gonna matter. Now if you're using this as a card itself, then yes, you can put string on both sides because it'll look like a little gift bag. The next thing that you wanna remember is that when you're gluing the pieces together, you wanna make sure that the piece that has the handle on it, if you're only doing one side, is the outer pieces. I made the mistake of doing that, the doing it the other way the first time, and you could see the seams and it didn't look right. So make sure that the flaps go over top and not, you don't, don't put glue on this side, put glue on the side that's gonna be glued to the back of this on the flaps. That's tip number two. Tip number three is to make sure you tie this in place before you put your bag together because you know how hard it is to reach in and do this. I actually learned that from watching a video that somebody did. They said that they tied this on first so that it wouldn't, because um, it's really hard to tie from the inside here. Make sure that your knots are large enough so that they won't come through the front of this. Um, this one is not, it's just a little piece. Um, but that's another tip, just make sure that your knots are large enough so that your string doesn't keep pulling through. And then this is what I did. So here's the tissue piece. And what I did was I just took some Copic markers and did some coloring and did some shading so that it looks like it has a little bit of dimension. Now I made this as a test one and I really liked the way that it came out. I took it on a five by seven card and I put just some pattern paper behind it that I just thought I thought it needed just a little bit of green to spice it up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the notches for the gift card holder. So this is going to be for the parents of the two kids that I bought for for Angels of God. Uh, on the on this sheet that I got or the email that I got. They had asked, um, they had said something about the parents on there, and I didn't ask to do a family, but I feel really bad because um, the parents are in need too, so I just thought that they could use a gift card to Target, and tonight Target had gift cards 10% off for the actual Target gift cards, and you can always use your red card for 5% off, so I just went and picked up a Target gift card for them because I'm sure that yeah, Target has everything, so I'm sure that they can use it to buy stuff that they need, so... I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to write a little message inside. I don't know the parents' names, so I'm just going to write uh, the parents of the two kids' names, and then I'm going to drop this off with the other presents. So that's a completed one, and this is how it looks on a card. Um, I would peel it off, but I don't really want to do that right now. But I will do one, I'll do a video and show you, maybe when I put these together, maybe I'll show you how to do that and then not actually have it attached to a card base and make this be a card in itself. 
Now, you can mail this in a 5x7 envelope. Um, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm not sure about that. I don't know that I would actually mail it. Um, if you're giving it to somebody, you can put it in a 5x7 envelope. But I just feel like it might, one, be too bulky, and two, actually get smushed in the mail. So I think that I would, if I was making these for people, I would hand deliver them instead of sending them. So that's the first one. So now I tried some embossing paste or texture paste and let me show you the way they came out because this one I super, I, lo I actually love both of them. Um, the first one that I did, I saw somebody do a tone on tone foil with embossing powder or embossing um, paste. So I went through my stash and I found three of these. I found a gold, a silver, and I think it was a pink maybe. I've never used these. I bought these a long time ago. I think I actually bought these at my Michaels that closed probably two years ago, right after the Hobby Lobby opened. So they were a dollar ninety seven, dollar ninety seven, dollar ninety nine, something like that. The silver one is completely unusable. You can't even squeeze it out. But this one you just squeeze from the top. It's just like a little tube of toothpaste, and I put the stencil over top of it. What you have to remember is that you're going to want to mask off the pieces that are going to fold and the pieces that are going to be on top. So it does look like a true pattern here. And this is kind of gold on gold foil embossing or texture paste. I love it. And look at how, how funny it is. Now, I didn't know that this was going to happen, but look, it looks like there's layers in the tree. See how there's like the lines there? I don't even know how that happened because it was just literally a tree stencil. Uh, the stencils are actually in my bathroom. I had to wash them. So they are drying. I had to wash the embossing, embossing paste off of them. But this is it. So I'm super excited about this. I have to figure out what color string to do for this. I do have this jute from the dollar store, but I don't think it would look right with this. I brought this out because I thought it might go with the one of the other ones, but don't like this one. So I have that one, so we'll make that into a bag. So that's the second one. And then I did another one with embossing paste. And this is a little bit, uh, this, I used this Texture Lux, which again, I bought this on clearance. This is fa uh, Faber-Castell, and it is, the pearl one. It's pretty similar to that. It's a little bit creamier and I don't know whether this is a little bit more gold because I had go I did the gold one first or this is just the color that it is but it's beautiful in person. I love it and this is some white sparkle cardstock that I bought for um and I was doing a tags for one of my friend's son's communions. I did I bought this paper so I have a ton of it left over and I just thought that would look really really pretty on the bag. In my head this texture paste was more tone on tone rather than a like this kind of reminds me of bronze not really of pearl. So I'll have to give it another try so I don't know if it's a reaction to the paper or this is the way that it really is because I haven't used this. So I'm really trying to get out and use my products. So that is the second bag, and again, this will fold. I'll do the back, and then I'm actually going to do this, I believe, as just a bag itself and not on a card. And the third one that I did was inspired by, uh oh I can't find the star. Oh, no. It's got to be around here somewhere. It's probably stuck to my, uh, oh, it's on the floor. Okay. So this bag was inspired by this. So I did this the other day and I used an MFT die. I believe it was the free one from last month. And it cuts out all these pieces here. So these like this, this would, this just goes in here. Oh, this is backwards. So it would just pop back into place like this. So you can color these in and um, paper piece them back together. So you can have a pattern on your tree. You can do it out of one color cardstock and then, or just white cardstock and then paper piece your tree back together in a, like I could have paper piece this. But all I did was take a, I cut a piece of green glitter cardstock and put that behind it. And then let me see if I can get the star real quick before I lose it. Um, I just took some glitter, oh sorry, some gold, what are these things called? The, the gold Nouveau drops and I just did the star. So I'm just going to pop that back into place and this is going to go on a card. So I thought, oh, 
let me see what it would look like if I did a used a die on the bags because I was trying to do a bunch of different techniques with each of the dies that or each of the dies actually yes yeah, sorry dies that I got from Honeybee because I feel like a lot of the times I'll buy it and do one thing with it and then put it away and won't use it again for a really long time so I figured let's try a bunch of different techniques and see what I can do so I cut the tree out of this and then what I did was I did the same thing that I did with the green cardstock over there and then I took a piece of that same gold foil that you just saw the bag out of and I put that with the star so I'm going to create this bag the only thing is I don't know how this is going to work with sliding in and out hopefully it's not going to hit the tissue paper isn't going to hit this when you slide it in and out so i'll be curious to see about that but there are so many different things you can do with this and again i'll give you ideas in a couple minutes so that is what i did with the paper bag so or the gift bag die so far and then if you saw the video you also saw that i got these door dies and then they came with a bunch of other pieces and I saw some inspiration online and I wanted to try to do some one of the things, but it turned out that I did something that was kind of completely different than what I saw and what I had in mind, which usually happens with me. So there's a wreath here, there's a hello, and this can be a berry or the one of the doorknobs. There's a fancy doorknob, which I used. I can't pick this stuff up. <coughs> there's the fancy doorknob. There's some holly leaves. There are some larger leaves. And the leaves go both ways, so you can kind of create a wreath or you can create a swag to go kind of like to go on top of a mantle if you have a mantle piece um, for your card or whatever. So you can see the swags go both ways, see so that which is nice. And then what's so cool about this? This is the mail slot, and it actually opens. So wait till you see what I did. Um, oh, the last one I showed you. So this can either be steps, or you can turn it over, and it can be an overhang. And this is my house actually has this straight piece over my door. Some people have triangles, some people have half circles, um, but mine just happens to be the straight across one. So this is the card that I did. Totally different from what I thought it was going to be, but um, I am so in love with it. So I started out with some... Uh, just some craft cardstock and I actually cut both of these pieces out of craft cardstock. I did not use this smaller piece here but I did use the inserts. So I thought I was going to do that and then I decided I kind of wanted to do a panel inlay on the doors like some of the front doors have. I just thought that looked really cute. So what I decided to do was I took some ground espresso distress ink and inked up the edges all around both pieces. So this is the cutout piece from the larger one. This is the cutout piece for the smaller one. And then just layered them on top of each other and just laid them in here until I could put the door on. Um, I didn't go around the edges of the door. I could have done that, but I did not. I took some of that same gold foil and did the, let's see if you can see the doorknob, the fancy doorknob, and then the mail slot. How cute is this? So it does open. You can see that here that I'm lifting it. And I just cut a piece of white cardstock into a rectangle, and then I drew the envelope on it like there's mail sticking out of it. I just thought that was so cute and a cute little way to show that this little flap opens here. So because I was thinking, I want to put it on, but I don't want it to go to waste thinking that, you know, you can actually open it. So what you can do is you can actually stick a sentiment behind here if you have like a little tiny sentiment. Um, there's just, I, I feel like there's a bunch of different things you can do. I just haven't really thought of much besides putting the little envelope in there. I did glue it down so it can't slide around. So... I did, at least I did do that. Um, and then I took this die and went over some like regular, it's kind of like a Kelly green cardstock. I went over it with some peeled paint distress ink and I cut out the ring and then I also cut out, I think I cut out six pieces. I cut out the big guys once and then I cut out the smaller guys twice and then I just layered them up on here. Let's see if you can see this. I just layered it up on here until I got a full wreath because I thought this wreath looked a little chintzy. Like it's one of the um, narrower wreaths and then you can build on top of it, which I really, really liked. So I just did that. 
Initially, I was going to do a swag all the way around the door, but I decided not to. So what I decided to do to cover up the rest of the back, because this is a five by seven card, and it does take up the entire thing if you put the step or the um, trim to it on there. So what I did was I did some clapboard siding, or just some siding, and I just took pieces of quarter inch cardstock, and just randomly cut them. You don't have to cut them at any certain uh, size because you're not really going to see much of either of it. Let's see if you can see. You can't really see much of it on either side. And then I took a Copic marker and I believe it was B69 possibly? Mm, yes. And just kind of did a shadow. I did a Christmas card like this uh, for an MFT challenge a while ago, and I did it with uh, grays, which killed my Copic markers. <laughs> I need to refill them. But anyway, and I just thought that it looked really cute and kind of realistic, so I went in. Hopefully you guys can see that. I went in and did that. So there's a up-close picture of that. I haven't put anything on the inside yet because I just let the berries dry, and the berries are just some of this red Studio G glitter glue that I got at AC Moore or Michaels. I think it was Michaels. So there's tons of pieces in here, but I just thought this is super cute. And this is not a Christmas only one. You could do this and do a summer wreath. You can, uh, I've seen people do like flip flop wreaths. So if you have a little like flip flop die or if you have a Cricut, you can cut out a bunch of flip flops and you can make it go around in a wreath. You can make it be for 4th of July. You can make it be for Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christ uh, Christmas obviously, uh, Valentine's Day. New Year's you can do pretty much anything with this it's not a specific ring because you can't really tell you can just use this as a base and then build your whatever you want around it so I just thought this was really really cute I, I'm in love with the way this came out probably going to do more of these cards um, I do want to do one that it layers the dies up so I'll show you guys real quick so this is what the dies look like if you layer them up but I decided not to do it in this card, but I will do it in a future card. So that's everything that I've done so far today. I want to give you guys a couple of ideas real quick. So since the bag is not so deep, I thought what would be really cute is you could put something like, you have this die. This is from MFT, and this is the um, it's called the puzzle cover-up. So you could do a puzzle and put all the pieces in there and then have the person put it together, maybe do a picture of their gift on there. So maybe like um, a couple of years ago, my friend from California had bought her husband a race car driver experience. And she couldn't figure out how to give it to him, so we decided on a puzzle. So I thought she did a picture of the car and the experience, and like I think it had the um, like what it was underneath of it. And he put the puzzle together and found out what his present was. So I thought that was a really really cute idea. So you could do something like that if you're getting a present that is hard to wrap and maybe you have to hide it somewhere and you don't want that under the tree. You can do something like that and create the puzzle pieces and put it in the gift bag and have the recipient do the puzzle. Just thought that was a really, really cute idea. Just something to mix some of the things that I've done in the past together. Um, it, again, it doesn't have to be for Christmas. And you can use, these are the nail polish bottle dies. And I thought that would be really cute. Just do a plain one, put a big bottle of nail polish on it, and give somebody a gift card to the nail salon or the spa. Um, and do stuff like that that makes the gift card holder, the, the gift bag, personalized to the event that you're giving them the gift card for or whatever you're doing for them. So, or you can just kind of put the person's name on it or do their favorite character. Uh, the other thing that I had, I don't, I think it's still over on the other side, but uh, Mama Elephant does favor bag add-ons where they have the character. So they have an elf, they have a Santa, they have a snowman. They have cats and dogs, and I know Simon Says Stamp has some picture book dies. That kind of stuff would look awesome on the front of this. And then you can make it anywhere from something that is for a little kid, 
all the way up to something that's classy and sophisticated for an adult. You can do, you know, like do very, very classic stuff like this. You can do, it's a perfect way to give a gift card for a wedding shower, a baby shower. There's so many different things you can do with this and I am so excited and so glad that I got this die. I passed it up the first time and then when I did my second order, I, um, saw a video on it and I am so glad that I got it because I think that it's super super useful so if you guys are looking for something that's creative and most people I don't think anybody has really ever seen a gift bag as a card like this so I think it would be something very very fun to give I'm pretty sure that I'm going to do that for my cousin's baby shower coming up a couple months but that's it I just Kind of, the, kind of just threw some random ideas at you and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will be back to show you how I put everything else together how you do the bags how and I'll, I'll put one together for you guys I apologize that I lost all the video footage of that um, a phone call came in in the middle of it and it just ruined the whole entire thing and uh, I just didn't have the heart to start over again so I just figured I'd walk you guys through it so my apologies, but I will show you guys how to put the bags together at another point. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions on any of the products that I used in these videos, feel free to leave me a message or send me a DM and I will get back to you. Thanks guys. Bye.